I'm uh, I'm talking to you. It's uh, 12th of March. Everyone's got back at school today, this week, I suppose. And um, I hope you've had a good time. I always had uh, a rather strange relationship with school, really, in that I was pretty well bored if I was at home for the long holidays. I didn't like it very much. So I hope it's been better for you. So um, today I've got a little exercise and uh, a little tip, if you like, a little writing tip. And sort of in honour of those people who... Um, I don't know, like me, found school a little difficult. Uh, this one is completely the opposite of stuff that you normally learn. Everyone's always telling you, you know, how you've got to, how you've got to, you know, concentrate and focus and get your head round stuff and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, whereas this little tip, it's much more about, it's much more about um, not doing things. It's more about um, uh, uh, taking your time. And it works like this, you know, that um, there's uh, the, bit of, the bit of your brain which hopefully is looking at me and concentrating and listening to what I'm saying. The bit at the front, that's a tiny little bit of brain. Most of your brain's at the back. And that's where all your other experiences and all your ideas and all your feelings and all the things that you've thought and all the things that have ever happened to you are stored. The whole thing. And all, that's where all the connections are made. That's where, all the, that's where all the ideas happen. That's where all the exciting stuff goes on. And uh, that, of course, is where your imagination lives. And if you're going to do creative things and you're going to work with your imagination, you have to find a way of making that big bit of the brain at the back perform for you. And so I've got a little tip which I use, and it does involve doing very little. Uh, what you do is this. You find an activity which is very relaxing. Baths are very good. Uh, going for a nice little walk or having a kip works very well. And what you do is you you uh, you have a little think, you know, about what the issue is, about what the problem is. Don't try and solve it. Just remind yourself of what it is. And then, say if you're having a bath, you get in and you lie there and you float around for 20 minutes or however long. And then just before you get out, uh, you have another think about that problem. And with a bit of luck, there'll be an idea there without any effort on your part. OK, and it's that process of developing a relationship with that part of your brain, the big bit of your brain, which can help you come up with ideas, find new ways of doing things, perhaps unusual ways of doing things. OK, so there you go. That's my writing tip for you. And I have a little I have a little a little exercise. And what it is, it's the beginnings of a story. And what I'd like you to do is try and finish it off. Um, if you want, you can try and use. Uh, the little tip that I've told you, if you want to see if you can generate an idea from there. So it goes something like this. You are in the park with your little brother Michael, and it's the autumn, the trees are changing colour, and on the railings behind you there's a row of crows sitting, watching. And uh, all Michael wants to do is go up on the swings, higher and higher, and you push him and push him, he wants to get higher and higher, he even lets go of the swing and flaps his arms as if, if you were to push him hard enough, he could actually take off and fly. It's scary. So in the end, you take him out, squealing, and you put him back in the push chair, and you do up the scraps, and just as you're about to go, one of those crows takes off from the railings, and it lands on the handle of the push chair with a thud. The crow is huge. You think you're gonna shoo her off, but before you do, the crow clears her throat and says to you in a smoky voice, this little lad, he's one of us. We'd like him back. Little Michael coos at the crow and he reaches out his fist and takes the bill in his hand. Some sort of a trick's been played, says the crow in a muffled voice. She pulls her beak free, looks at you, smiles and says, what do you say? Can we have him now? There you go. That's the beginnings of a story. What comes next? That's up to you. Do whatever you like with it, and um, maybe you could try my little trick to see if you can get an unusual idea out of it. Good luck.